What's going on everybody? Today I got a review for you for two pieces of software from a company called ENC Security. Uh, those of you who don't know, it's a uh, internet security company that specializes in military grade encryption, data recovery, keeping your files secure, ease of access. Uh, they currently have over 12 million users that have purchased and used the software. It meets all uh, HIPAA guidelines and everything like that that you need for actual encryption of your files. So if you have sensitive data and you don't want to have that fall into the wrong hands, ENC Datafault, that's the first one we're going to be taking a look at, uh, allows you to encrypt your files so you can make an encrypted flash drive to save your stuff to, all that stuff. Now what I'm going to show you is how I use it on my desktop. I don't really believe in putting anything on volatile flash memory just because when that goes, it's gone most of the time or unrecoverable. You can get the files back, but they're not going to be 100% intact. So. I don't recommend doing things on a flash drive. Volatile memory is never a good idea. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about ENC's data recovery software, which works fairly well. Now, for full transparency, ENC software. Now, for full transparency, ENC Security did provide me both of these softwares to take a look at to do, give an unbiased review. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it doesn't have any bearing on my final answer, final judgment, because they provided it for me. I'm just going to be honest with you guys, as I always do. So. And the one thing I will say is that the uh, one of the co-founders of the company, Martin, I think is how you say his name. If I'm mispronouncing that, I'm terribly sorry. It could be Martin. I don't know. Um, but they have been extremely helpful and thoughtful in working with me to get some of the bugs in the software resolved. So they're very, very open to feedback. So if you do purchase the software and you encounter any issues, their team is very good at resolving it. And that's that's the God's honest truth. They were Phenomenal at helping me get some of the issues resolved. And the issue I had was a key issue. Could have just been because I'm running it on here and not on a flash drive. I, I don't know. I had no problems with the recovery software, but the data vault, when I first installed it, I did have some issues. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch to the webcam with a green screen kind of action. We're going to go ahead and talk about that. Uh, and I'll show you guys how the software works. And it's super simple, so this video is not going to be too long, but I'm just going to show you guys how all that works. And then I'll show you the recovery software. So here we go. What's going on everyone? We're going to talk about this uh, ENC Data Vault. We're on the desktop now, so let me go ahead and open it up and insert my password. So let me go ahead and type that in. It's nice and simple. And let's make a new vault just for the sake of this video. And we are going to go ahead and save that to... We'll save it to the media drive. And we'll call it uh, Data Vault. And I can't spell. I'll rename it. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes you fat hand it no matter how much you type. All right, so here it is. We have nothing in our vault, okay? This is this is how the software works. So let me go ahead and open up some files and I'll make a, a little demo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to encrypt this fundamental observation ticket and this song right here and this video. So there we go, they're in here. Let me go ahead and make a backup. Now, You'll notice when I created the vault, I was able to tell it where I wanted the vault to be stored. So that completely negates having an SSD or anything like that. So that's uh, kind of nice that you can select a directory to store your backup on. It only makes sense. It's a, it's an encryption software with data backup. You want to be able to tell it where you want your files to go. So that's what we've done. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to back up this vault data. We'll do both my vaults. We'll back them up. Done. Okay, so this may not seem like it's anything crazy, right? Check this out. Let me go here. Let me delete these completely from here, and I will purge the recycle bin. So let me go here, let me purge, empty, purge, delete, yes. Okay, great. So you'll notice that in my downloads folder, those files are now long gone. Let's go ahead and close that. Now I can go in here in my encrypted files and open it up, and it plays just like it's any normal file. Nothing crazy going on, just a standard, you know, acts like a file, but the decryption is that fast and the encryption is that fast that once you enter your password, you can access these files like any other file. And I'm not gonna open up my fundamental observation tickets. Sorry, boys and girls, that's not happening. All right, so the reason there's no sound playing is because I have it muted, because I don't want anything going boom in the middle of this video. So that's pretty much it. You can also see the versioning of each file uh, and changes to, the, uh, to your vault, which is really nice. And this vault can be backed up to other locations. So if you wanna back it up to you know, I don't know, another location. You basically go where you created it, copy paste it, and you're good to go. But you're not going to be able to break that encryption without the passkey. So when you're done, and you, you know, you don't want people snooping on your files, boop, hit lock. Now you can't get to them. Even if I navigate to the vault, it's going to be an encrypted file. So this software is very, very nice, especially for me. I've got a lot of financial documents, things for my business that I really don't want anyone getting their hands on. So those are all backed up using ENC Data Vault, and I trust them. They've got 
They've got the legs to back this. They've been doing this a while. It was founded with a security expert and someone who was passionate about making sure data was protected. But let's go ahead and talk about the data recovery software. It's called ENC Recovery. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Uh, let me see, what drive do I want to use? Now this is where I think going simple with their uh, software maybe is a little bit of a detriment in my opinion, just because I wish that I had more options through here to find uh, different drives. Right now it shows L and G. Well, if you look at my computer, L is empty and G is an, uh, an empty Windows drive. So we'll just go ahead and format that. And we'll name it demo. Yes, I know, it's going to erase all the data. And then I'll show you what we did, how it works. It works fairly well. The only thing I wish that the software did, which I'm not sure how to do it, and I'm sure if I reach out to the team, they'll, they'll tell me how to do it, or they'll actually implement it. But if I put a memory card or something that's volatile memory into my card reader, it doesn't detect it as an actual, uh, as a removable drive, which is really frustrating. I've had memory cards take a dive on me and it's just the worst feeling in the world. So we're gonna go ahead and just do all files and we're going to do it on the G drive because that is my flash drive. And now we wait, because it's going to go for every single file. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this here, come back in a minute and show you guys what it finds. One thing to note is I do like the fact that it gives you a countdown. That is kind of nice. The countdown timer does kind of let you know, hey, we're doing something. It's not just sitting here randomly snipping through your files. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a half hour. No, I'm not gonna make you guys sit and watch 30 minutes of paint drying. I'll go ahead and stop this here and then uh, we'll come back uh, once it's done and I'll go ahead and talk about it. During the data recovery, if you watch your C drive, your C drive will start to fill up. It'll start taking data. And what it's doing is it's pulling the found files, you know, where the headers have been stripped and relocating them to a temporary medium. You never want to put it back to the same drive that it's doing the data recovery on. Otherwise it overwrites data and then that data becomes corruptible. So you'll notice that my, my C drive will go down whatever the storage capacity or near what the files it's found on it. So that's a 32 gig flash drive at 30, 30 ish minutes. It's not too bad. Uh, comparable to like Recuva, uh, Krolls on track, uh, data recovery. It's about, about the same. Uh, so nothing really super, you know, out of the norm here, but we're just going to let it continue talking. But that was something I, I mentioned a little earlier. Now, before I reformatted my machine, because I was running into some stuff and I got an NVMe, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do a clean install. Before doing that, when I was playing with the software, I did do a junction point, and a junction point solved that problem completely. So if you're not familiar with how to do a junction point, I'll put a link down in the description box that tells you guys how to make a junction. Uh, you just have to go to a couple different spots for this program. Uh, you basically just have to know where the directory is and then make a junction point to point to that recovery folder. Uh, and then while it's pulling files, instead of storing them there, you can put it on another drive instead of taking up your SSD space. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so you can see now we fast forwarded through time a little bit. Uh, it's rebuilding the directories right now, so it's not completely done, but you can see that it uh, rebuilt the directories and recovered the files. They're all here. Uh, I can do the download recovery and tell, tell them where I want it to go. So yeah, it works super well. Uh, it works about as well as Recuva. Uh, the thing I do like about this, though, is this is far easier to use than Recuva. Recuva's free. It's not super complicated, but this right here is a much better piece of software, in my opinion. The only thing I wish that they would change, it doesn't seem to want to work with my SD cards, uh, which is something I've done a lot of data recoveries on for friends and family and things like that. You know, they go on a trip, memory card gets corrupted, I try to pull the photos. Traditionally, what I would use in that instance is Recuva. But uh, until this gets an update and allows me to use removable media, I think that's going to be one drawback to this, but its ease of use far exceeds uh, Recuva. And Recuva is not hard to use by any stretch of the imagination. It's literally just uh, you know a couple clicks, but you really, really want to make sure you know like the advanced settings. Whereas as I showed you guys, the more options in this is very limited. You tell it the file type and your language, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna do it. Let's pop back out to the other camera and we'll do our final thoughts. All right, guys, so what do you think? Those are two pieces of software. I think they're super useful in the day-to-day -day life. Uh, the only thing that I would like to change, as I said, is I would like the data recovery software to recognize volatile flash memory. Um, specifically, since I do a lot of these videos and do a lot of photography, I've had memory cards fail on me before uh, where free software alternatives like Recuva would not recover crap off of it because uh, you know that was an actual physical hardware failure in one of the instances. And I had where Recuva could pull some files off of it. Granted, it wasn't all of them, but what it could pull, it was able to pull. Uh, that's one thing that I, I would wish they would change, and I'm sure they will. I haven't talked to them about that yet because uh, it's one of those things where I kind of wanted to give you guys 
a flat out true representation of where the software is at right now as of this review. Who knows, that could be something that they implement later in a later build. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap this up. So if you guys found this video useful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Tell me what you do, don't like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. This is Chris, I'll see you guys later. Thank you and have a great night.